please help me welcome Anna Mae Smith. Oh, he's tall. All right. Oh my gosh, look how pretty you guys are. You're all so beautiful. I'm so excited to be here. There's like nothing that could make me more excited to be here, except I kind of wish my parents could be here to see it. Just like, they're not dead or anything. They're just in Nebraska, because they're just, that's where they live. They weren't kidnapped. They're in Nebraska. <laughs> um, and I'm from Nebraska, and I'm like super like my parents' daughter, like exactly. Like, you'd be able to tell who they were if they were in the room, because I've got like my mom's like exact like blue eyes and bone structure, you know, and I've got my dad's like exact boobs. And so you'd be <laughs> able to tell. You could spot them out. Um, no, I am from Nebraska, though, originally. I ended up here because I went to school at KU. That's something that I, well, don't applaud for yourselves. That's tacky. Just kidding. Yeah, KU, that's fun. Um, I went to school at KU, and I didn't go for, like, um, sports or, like, not that you guys are like, she's an athlete. You guys are like, she looks like she smells like cat pee. And you're right, but I, um, I went there for... Theater. I majored in theater at KU, and I had a professor there. That's actually how I got started in stand-up and stuff. I had a professor who told me that stand-up would be, like, a good way to conquer stage fright, you know, and prepare for the future um, for after I get my degree and I have a career in stripping, because what else are you going to do with a theater degree? How am I going to pay that off? I have to take my clothes off. No, just, I'm not a stripper, but thank you. Thank you. Um, no, I'm not, I don't have the boobs for it, like we talked about, but I think I'd be a shoe in I definitely have the messed up teeth, so I could do it, I think. <laughs> I'd be fine. I could do that. No, I haven't. No one's ever asked, so <laughs> I don't do that. Um, but no, I actually do have a job, though. I have a lot of jobs. Anyone here poor? Yeah, anyone here a poor person? <laughs> okay, yeah, all of us are poor and we're gonna die that way. But I do, I have, uh, I've had a couple jobs um, at a time. Like I'm a tour guide sometimes, which I thought would be fun because you talk into a microphone to a bunch of people, right? You think I'd like that? Um, it's fine. It's kind of like any other customer service job, right? I'm sure some of you in retail or uh, baristas or something, in customer service, you start playing that fun game of would you rather in your head, you know, after a while, like when a customer walks in and you're like, would I rather help you or get public diarrhea and die of my own bowel failure right now? <laughs> Which would I rather do? It's a genuine toss up, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I think, I don't know if I'll be doing it forever because I think I like, uh, it's starting to show, maybe that would you rather attitude is starting to show a little bit in my tours. I had a tour recently where this woman asked me, hey, how long has this building been here? And I was like, I don't know, lady, it was here yesterday, all right, it's gonna be here tomorrow and someday we'll all be dead. Does that answer your question? So I don't know about that, but that's okay. Got a lot of jack of all trades, got a lot of stuff lined up, bartending. I do a little bartending, or I did a little bartending, um, which was, it was a weird choice for me, because I was kind of a late bloomer, like, like drinking and stuff wise, not body hair, but like, I was a late bloomer. Um, but I started bartending, and at first I liked it a lot. I had this coworker who's a good friend of mine, her name's Vicky, um, and Vicky and I would bartend together, and it would be a lot of fun. Um, and she actually had a regular customer. It was kind of a hole in the wall place. She had a regular customer that she thought was really attractive. So she, his name was Todd. So she called him Hot Todd. Yeah, she would call him Hot Todd. It was a cute little name, right? It's cute, it's Hot Todd. But she's a, he was a regular. So soon everyone started calling him Hot Todd. Like all the chefs, the other bartenders, the other regulars, everyone's calling him Hot Todd, which was fine except that there was another bartender named Todd. <laughs> yeah, so if you, <laughs> if you came to that bar and you were like, hey, who's here tonight? And then someone else would have to go, oh, Todd's here. And you'd go, oh, cool, hot Todd? And they'd have to go, no, it's, it's Todd, it's just Todd, <laughs> right? Which is a little sad, it's a little sad for Todd, regular Todd. And I, uh, and I tried to explain this to Vicky, like how this might, like hurt someone's feelings, because Vicky's a friend of mine, and I was like, Vicky, like, 
<laughs> like, think about it this way. Like, what if I had two friends named Vicky, right? And I called you Vicky, and then as a fun nickname, I called the other one not a total cunt Vicky, right? <laughs> How would that make you feel? <laughs> no, she didn't. She didn't get it, and then I was fired. Who knew? Um, <laughs> Thanks for letting me use the C word, the cunt word. Thanks for letting me use that. People, you know, dudes get all kinds of cool words for their stuff. People can be like, my dick, or like, whatever. You know, that's fun. We don't have, cunt makes people feel weird. Vagina's too medical. I don't like medicine. Um, <laughs> pussy is like weird now. <laughs> Pussy's a weird one. I just call mine the Sarlacc pit. That's what I call mine. Because like, whatever. Like one dude's died in there. It's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> God. Uh, but no. <laughs> Back to Vicky and Todd. I just think it's don't be shallow is the lesson, right? Well, don't call someone a cunt at work, but don't be shallow <laughs> is the lesson. I can find, everyone can be attractive, right? I can find something attractive about any Todd, right? All Todds can be hot to me. Just probably why they call me slut Anna. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not true. I was raised Catholic. Who's ever heard of a Catholic slut? <laughs> <sighs> Oh, boy. Um, God, stripper, cunt, slut. Good, I'm a feminist comedian. Perfect. Um, so, no, I, um, I, uh, I was raised Catholic. I'm not Catholic anymore, as happens to Catholics sometimes. <laughs> you guys see that movie, Spotlight? That was a good movie. Um, so, <laughs> no, I am <laughs> not joking upset. Mark Ruffalo, though, he, sometimes I wonder, sorry, it's a tangent now, sometimes I wonder, does Mark Ruffalo know that he's my boyfriend forever? Or is it just gonna be like a fun thing that he finds out, like those girls on I didn't know I was pregnant, you know? <laughs> like, he's like, ooh, I like, I thought I had to take a shit, but it turns out I'm in love with Anna Smith. Is that what it's gonna be? I don't know, but anyway. Used to be Catholic, not anymore. That was the point, which is fine. I've never found a religion that works for me, really. For me, I'm, it's always a problem with the, the old and timey texts right? Like, women aren't treated very well in those, I find, and as a human woman, I find, you know, it's hard for me to relate. I know a lot of women who find great stuff in religion, and I support that. I'm just, I'm too self-involved. I need to be the star. That's the point. <laughs> and ladies, typically not the star of anything, ever. And so, I found, as a little kid growing up, reading these texts, uh, Catholicism especially, it's all about, like, whether or not you're a virgin, it seems like like everything that you are as a person is placed on whether or not you're a virgin as a woman. And when I was a kid, I was like, that's everything? Like your whole worth as a person is whether or not you're a virgin? Like that like stresses me out. Like I feel like my hymen's gonna break just from all the pressure you're putting on it. That's too much. <laughs> and so I'm not Catholic anymore. It's fine, they wouldn't want me. But um, <laughs> gosh, you guys ever just feel like super stupid all the time? <laughs> is that what you guys are about as people? Do you guys feel dumb? Has anyone ever made the masturbate thing at you? <laughs> like, not <laughs> with their real, like, when they're, they're saying, like, you're stupid, and then they masturbate at you. You know what you do. And they, like, jerk off their, like, fake thing, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? You can, okay, yeah. You know, just say, I don't jerk off a lot of, anyway. But, um, so, my friend, I have a friend of mine, my friend Katie Holmbeck, I don't know. It's I'm not good at fake names. Look her up on Facebook. That's her name. But um, she did this to me one day. I don't know what I was saying. I was probably like, my mom's in the hospital. And she was like, ugh. I don't know what it was. But she did that to me. And I was like, Katie, like, you're a girl. Like, be more of a lady about it, dude. You, you know? Like, come on. And she was like, I was like, do the girl version of that. Because you're a girl. And she was like, Anna, don't be gross. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, Katie, uh, you just jerked off your dick and then threw it in my face. So who's the gross one? I didn't do that, right? That was not my fault. But I get kind of, I can get how the girl version wouldn't work, right? I understand that it probably wouldn't work that well. Um, I can see like this, people know what you're doing, right? You're disrespecting them through masturbation, right? You know. <laughs> But with the girl version, I'd be afraid that it would just look like um, air guitar. <laughs> right? No one would know what you're trying to do. No one would get it. What if I were at a party? Think about it. If I were at a party, some like tall, handsome, 
bespectacled man walks up to me and I'm sitting there and I'm just a little wallflower. And I'm like, oh, this one. Hmm. And then he comes up and he says, hey, you like parties? Ooh. And then I go, ugh. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, you're in the band? I better leave you alone to prepare. He leaves, never see him again. Just show him your dick, ladies. Just show him your dick. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I will say uh, that it's, we've got a, political climate that's a lot of fun and we're all having so much fun right now. I won't talk about it ex explicitly, um, but I will say that it has given me some goals. The current uh, everything that's happening to us right now, not with us, to us. Um, and it's given me a goal. One of them is to like be more confident in like what I have to say, like be a person, go out there, be less concerned with what I look like, right? Be less self-conscious, less body dis whatever nonsense. That's a new goal of mine. And part of that reason is because I had an experience where I took that body self-consciousness too far. Uh, and I just like, it's like a warning to the world. It was a lesson. Has anyone here ever had a Brazilian wax before? Is this, yeah, that's the correct reaction. Some of you have. I heard that. Everyone went, oh, and those are the people who've had one. Yeah. I had a Brazilian wax. And the only reason I'm talking about it is just in case you're kicking it around as an idea in your head or uh, you're thinking about getting one or you know someone who's gotten one, you should know everything that goes into this so that you can appreciate or depreciate that process as you see fit, right? A Brazilian wax, by the way, it's a bikini wax, but they just take everything that you've ever loved away from you and they take it away and you never see it again, right? They, all of it's gone. So I went to get a Brazilian wax and I went after work one day, so I was the last person of the day, and I went to a small boutique in Westport, Kansas City, because I don't understand how hygiene works, and so I went <laughs> to this boutique. <laughs> By the way, speaking of hygiene, <laughs> I think I understand, and some of you were like, ew, I hate this pubes. Well, I didn't, I don't know, you're here, so what are we gonna do? But I think I understand, <laughs> I think I understand the reason, like, evolutionarily, why we have pubic hair. I think I get it now, and that is to, like, ward off the kind of person who would want you to get a Brazilian wax. That's what it is. <laughs> Like predators are one, <laughs> or Brazilians, right? <laughs> or those, those people who like Pop-Tarts that don't have frosting and sprinkles on them. They just like those weird bear holes. <laughs> don't want to have breakfast with that person, just saying. I didn't do this for anyone, though. I was just a young lady, just curious about my options of maintenance, right? That's all it was. I was tired of going to the pool and then hearing whispers where my friends were like, I thought she was a Democrat, but it looks like she voted for Bush. Like, I didn't want that anymore. <laughs> and so I, oh. <laughs> so, I, um, so I went to this little boutique and um, there was a woman there. It was just me and her. I was the last person of the day. She was like, maybe five feet tall and definitely of a senior citizen age. And so I just felt bad that I was about to deal all like six foot of this. She was gonna have to deal with this. So I went up and I handed her my Groupon because I had a Groupon to get a wax. What are you better than me? Probably. So <laughs> I gave her this Groupon. She's trying to figure it out in the computer and she can't, there's no one else there and she can't work it in the computer. And I'm like, oh, if she can't work that mouse, how's she gonna work my mouse? I'm nervous about this. Eventually she figured it out. She leads me into this nice room. It's actually really beautiful. It's like a spa. There's like dim lighting and like indigenous flute music playing and <laughs> birds chirping and stuff. It was nice. And she leads me to this room and she's got this soft voice and she tells me that I just, uh, to undress from the waist down and lay on the table and she hands me something that she calls a modesty towel that I can cover up uh, to feel comfortable and she'll be in whenever I'm ready. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. So I lay down and I put on my modesty towel and it's very nice. And then I hear just like a at the door and she says, are you ready? And I say, yes. And then this old woman just busts in the room, rips off the modesty towel, doesn't shut the door, not her vagina, who cares? And then just starts ruining my life, <laughs> ruining it. She is making me move and do things, positions I have never for anyone. And she's making me move around 
and she is having to, it's so painful, she's having to hold my legs down. This poor old woman, my body is fighting her, right? Uh. I am not fighting her, my body is fighting this old woman. She has to hold my legs down. She's saying things like, are you okay? Would you like some water? And I have to say, oh, no, I'm okay. And she says, that's good. I wouldn't want you to have to go to the bathroom. And then I say, hey, yeah, it's fine. I'm never doing that again. You're taking that from me. And so we're, um, my body is fighting her. She's having to hold me down. At one point, she says, would it make you feel better if you could see it? And then I said, God, no, I don't want to see it. What are you, crazy? This is an experiment. But then she turns around, and out of nowhere, I go, why do you have a framed photo of Homer Simpson's mouth? It wasn't. It was a mirror of my horrible body. And so, <laughs> so she's having to do this. It's upsetting, right? We get, I'm making sounds I've never made before. It's all happening. And then eventually she starts waxing my legs. Because again, I had a group on, got a lot of body areas. <laughs> she starts waxing my legs. She tells me the worst is over, right? And I'm just kind of laying there like war torn <laughs> after my experience. And she's just sort of talking and I'm not listening because I'm thinking of my own tragedy. And she's waxing my legs, and she tells me to turn over, and she's waxing the backs of my legs. And it's, um, it's been about two hours <laughs> at this point because I'm German. And so, um, yeah, and then uh, uh, at one point she tells me, as soon as the legs are done, I'm, like, ready to go. But then she says, all right, now get on all fours which I did not know was part of this. Perhaps you did, those of you who went ooh at the beginning. So I didn't know what was, I can show, I'll give you just a little visual. Okay. So there's an old woman, imagine right here, like five feet tall, maybe 4'11". Maybe I'll do back here, just for a couple of you. And then I <laughs> have to get on all fours in front of this lady and I don't want to describe exactly what's happening at this point to you guys, but all I can say is what I was thinking was like, all right, I'm, I'm sitting here and I've got this woman's hand in my asshole and she's pretty just, she's just removing my asshole at this point, really. Uh, and all I can think is, would I rather Nope, I'd rather be here than my horrible job. All right, thank you guys so much. You guys have a great night.